Unicentric Castleman's disease is a unique disease. Um, some would say it's actually the most common variant of Castleman's disease. Again, we don't have great data on this, but some would say that up to 70% of Castleman's cases are the unicentric variant. The unicentric variant can come in two subvariants, highland vascular variant or plasma cell variant. Unicentric highland vascular variant disease uh, tends to be with very minimal symptoms. Generally, um, the symptoms that present in these patients are the symptoms attributable to an enlarged lymph node. So the lymph node has grown so large, it can press on something else. I've had many cases that lymph nodes can be the size of a grapefruit. And obviously, um, if they're in the thorax, the abdomen, or the axilla, they can, they can exert a number of, or even in the cervical chain, they can have a number of different local symptoms from the compression of that enlarged lymph node on the surrounding vascular or neurologic structures. So um, for unicentric disease, I would say the most common presentation is an enlarged lymph node, and that either will come to attention because it clinically is causing other symptoms or because it's picked up incidentally. So for instance, I've had patients where they were diagnosed with Castleman's disease after being in a car accident and a routine chest x-ray done at that time uh, to look for rib fracture shows an enlarged lymph node in the chest. I've had patients that um, have gone for executive physicals and have had uh, chest x-rays as part of that. And again, enlarged lymph nodes were detected that never had been causing any symptoms. So for unicentric disease, the hallmark is an enlarged lymph node, either with local symptoms because of compression or uh, picked up incidentally because of other radiographic or uh, medical testing. Um, patients who have unicentric plasma cell variant can have other constitutional symptoms that are associated with the disease. Most commonly, it is a debilitating fatigue, uh, night sweats, um, and fevers. Um, those are usually the constellation of symptoms, things that we typically call B symptoms, uh, that are associated with the plasma cell variant um, of unicentric disease. Finally, I just want to add that um, there is some controversy uh, among experts in the field as to whether unicentric disease sometimes may just represent an early presentation of multicentric disease and unicentric may eventually evolve into multicentric or whether it's its own distinct entity. I would say that for myself, I think it's, I consider it its own distinct entity because I have a number of patients who have been observed 20, 30 years and never progress beyond their unicentric manifestations. But even just yesterday in clinic, uh, I saw a patient who 20 years ago was thought to have unicentric disease, but then came back presenting with multiple enlarged lymph nodes 20 years later. So um, it highlights how much we don't know about Castleman's disease, but I think I would say that um, in general, unicentric disease is a distinct entity, typically with minimal symptoms, uh, and that differentiates it from the multicentric variant. Unicentric disease, um, when uh, it, it, there's a controversy as to whether or not to treat it and how aggressively to treat it, generally what would push you towards wanting to treat unicentric disease is when it has associated local symptoms. As you can imagine, um, it just depends on the location. So um, uh, I've seen unicentric disease in the cervical lymph node chain present with uh, an inability to breathe, strider and uh, difficulty uh, because of compression um, on the trachea. On the other hand, uh, you know, uh, disease in the axilla is generally uncomfortable uh, and patients present with pain and local symptoms related to just having a large lymph node in a small space. In the thorax, you can have a number of different compression syndromes. I've seen um, superior vena cava or SVC syndrome associated with uh, a, uh, a very large lymph node. Again, compression of nerves can lead to uh, neurologic deficits. Um, so in the thorax, again, where, uh, and in the mediastinum, where the disease was first described, again, because space is so limited, there can be a number of symptoms, usually vascular or neurologic, related to compression. In the abdomen, there's generally more room for a lymph node to swell, but I have seen cases of bowel obstruction or other local symptoms of abdominal pain in the setting of enlarged lymph nodes with unicentric disease. So if a patient were to have symptoms and the lymph node were uh, deemed by the provider to uh, be causing problems, the most common way that unicentric disease is dealt with is surgical resection. Um, generally, because the disease often requires a histologic biopsy, patients who present with a solitary enlarged lymph node will have a surgical excision of the entire lymph node. Um, and in my experience, recurrences are very unusual. Usually, surgical excision is definitive. There are cases where, because of the location of the lymph node, surgical excision is not an option. 
In those cases, um, external radiation therapy can be an option, and in some cases, chemotherapy or targeted biologic therapy. But the first-line therapy for unicentric disease generally is surgical excision. The majority of patients with unicentric Castleman's disease who undergo a surgical excision of a solitary lymph node will have no further recurrences, no additional symptoms, and outcomes are extraordinarily good. Um, I will say that there have been cases in my experience of unicentric plasma cell disease where the resection of the lymph node itself does not lead to a reduction in some of the associated constitutional symptoms. So patients may have the mass removed but may continue to have uh, constitutional symptoms like fevers or fatigue or night sweats. And perhaps this is because there are micro loci of the tumor or of the, of the lymph node that are left behind. Um, but I also would say that that's a rarity. Even most patients with plasma cell variant unicentric disease, the overwhelming majority in my experience, more than 90%, um, will have no further symptoms uh, for decades um, after surgical excision.